Um, well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going to be hearing from Alex from Together We Compost. Alex is an Afro eco theologian focusing on the intersections of race, environment, theology, so society, <laughs> economy, food access, identity, and a great deal more. Within this framework, Alex is an activist for environmental justice, Black food sovereignty, and community education locally and nationally. Alex's newest venture is Together We Compost, a Black-owned compost collection and a creation service for individuals and businesses. Together We Compost is stepping up as one piece of the more comprehensive solution. Our mission is to ensure that members of the BIPOC community are afforded the same access to impactful resources and justice-rich opportunities. We aim to reduce food waste through a member-based compost collection and education model. So with that, I will hand it over to you. Hey, thank you for the introduction. Um, and nice to see some of you all again and meet some of you. Um, so again, I'm Alex Clementson, um, owner and operator of Together We Compost. Um, my office managers are with me, Jasper and Sage. Um, and so if you, if you hear them demanding things, that means I haven't met the schedule. Um, and I do not own the rights to Daniel Tiger, but it is on. So you might catch some of that too. Uh, but yeah, I really wanted to just say thank you for the opportunity to kind of talk with you all and really share what we are, who we are, and what we're doing. Um, the synopsis you gave is, is really great. And so just to dive a little bit deeper into that, um, for the past two years, I've really been thinking, what is something that's low energy, high reward that a lot of folks can get into and people in the BIPOC, BIPOC community don't necessarily have access to? And so that's when I came to the idea of composting. Um, because most of us are, are able to eat, who would want to compost or who are able to frequently, are eating on a regular basis, may even be cooking in our, our own kitchens. Um, and even if those things aren't true, we are still in some ways receiving foods and there might be scraps from that. And so one of the easiest things to do is to then move those scraps into a compost pile and have somebody else come get it. Um, I mean, it's, I've had a lot of folks who have signed up and have said, it's nice to like see the impact that I'm making because I can physically tell how much food I'm wasting and that's helping me make better choices. Um, one of our top goals and missions is to really help create a just transition for folks in the BIPOC community as we face the climate crisis. Composting is an easy, easy way to make a big difference because it completes the food cycle and removes food from the waste stream. Um, you know, so far we've, we have just started collecting compost in the last few weeks officially after getting folks signed up and we've already removed 2,000 pounds of food out of the food waste stream. Um, so we're partnering with a couple food pantries, we're partnering with individuals um, and trying to create other contracts but the energy and the mission and the focus is there from other people and they're just trying to figure out how to get it directed. Um, as part of our mission what we offer are education classes, um, we offer you know, intro to gardening, we have do's and don'ts of composting. Um, we've partnered with OSU Extension to provide some of the videos that they have. Um, and we develop host sites. So if someone's like, oh, I've got a little bit of land at my house, and a little bit could be just a small patch, but they really want to compost or start a garden, we're able to develop host sites with them and then create, uh, make them into a volunteer site. Um, and we've got other stuff on the horizon with um, Swaco. So that's the sewer water, no, sewer water, it's the utility for sewer water, trash, and things like that. Um, but they've got some interest in what we're doing and how we're getting connected because we're reaching the people that they want to reach but don't necessarily have access to. Um, and with that said, one of our primary missions in terms of employment is getting folks who are re-entering society after incarceration. Um, and so our big goal of ours is to say, can we get enough contract and personal work that we can then get, provide people just employment opportunities at spaces of $15 an hour or more um, and create this kind of ecosystem in which we are collecting the food, composting the food, and then also growing our own food as host sites become um, functional farms. Um, again, the theme music in the background is Daniel Tiger, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, but yeah, and. And so to that, there's a lot of details there. And in this presentation, I really want to open it up as like a Q&A session. Like you all kind of ask 
uh, what you might be thinking, or if you have insights, or just kind of wondering what else we're doing and how we're making it work. And then I can give you some of the responses and give you more of a setup. Um, Cause I want this to be more a conversation than just talking at you. I have small children. I talk to people all the time. I would love to have a conversation with you. So with that, I'll open up the floor. Um, sorry, Alexander, did you say you had a presentation or did you just want us to kind of talk to you about your um, initiative? I was on mute, my bad. Um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to give a little bit of room for Q&A and then I'm really gonna talk about, um, talk about like the actual subject matter for today. Uh, so just wanted to leave it open for a few questions if anybody had any. And then if not, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. And I can jump into the presentation, but I didn't want to keep rolling and not give people room to, to ask their questions. Sure. Um, if there are any questions, you guys can feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, I feel like we may have more questions after you kind of um, tell us all about Together We Compost and the work that you're doing. Um, yeah, I'd personally love to know about the details of like, how you set this up and how you started targeting certain communities and how you're increasing access. Okay, um, I'll just give it 15 seconds. If no questions pop up, I'll jump right in. I guess one question I had is how did you kind of get into this in the first place? Like, I know you talked a little bit about that, but um, yeah. So I have a background um, in environmental justice and activism. Um, part of my master's degree focus is ecology and justice. And so doing work around the environment is not new to me. I've been doing it for years. Um, I was, excuse me, sir, this is my meeting. Um, I've been a farmer, um, I've worked with compost before, um, and I tried a few other ventures that just were so heavy to get off the ground that not a lot of people could have access to them. So compost just became a very clear option because it's something most people can do pretty easily, especially if they go to food pantries as well. Um, you, people who go to food pantries typically still have a lot of food waste because they're not able to use all the food or might not want 20 potatoes every week, you know? Um, so it just became a pretty apparent and accessible means. There you go, you can have that. Um, yeah, and so if that's the only question, then I will jump in to the presentation about community and compost. I don't need to uh, take over as host. There, there are no slides. It's just more of a kind of direct discussion. Um, yeah, and so jumping into this idea of community and compost, right? Community, there are so many folks who live in Columbus that are not being brought into this conversation around environmental justice, that are not being reached out to um, when there are town halls or when there are other actions being taken place. And as some of you may or may not know, black and brown communities tend to be the areas that have the poorest air quality, that tend to be the areas with the most factories, the soils more polluted, and the access to food um, may be visible and it may be apparent and possible, um, but your options are places like a Save-A-Lot. Um, and Save-A-Lot will sell yellow celery um, in a non-celery season. And so when those are some of your options for food, um, when you buy it, it instantly has to be scrapped. And so with all those factors in mind, Part of the conversation I was having with myself and other community members was just like, what is something we can do that's achievable and attainable that we have the resources to create and do for ourselves? Um, and so that's really how Together We Compost came about outside of my background in environmentalism um, and activism. It was, we have folks who are very interested in making a difference and we need a way to do that. We need access and we need to be affordable. Um, so what I did was I start reaching out to 
um, a few churches and a few folks I know in the Columbus area who have a little land and started having a conversation about what would it look like for us to compost in your space? Do you have these connections and the ability um, for me to bring food to your house to build different structures? Um, because if it's gonna be affordable, it has to be something that costs us almost nothing to start um, and then becomes profitable pretty quickly. Um, and so with that, I was able to find, okay, one person who has a whole acre of land in the city, which is phenomenal. Um, two churches that both have their own acre. Uh, I was able to partner with a couple food banks, one in Columbus, one in Delaware, um, and then with a few other churches as well who have said, our members are trying to find something they can do. What's something that's tangible? And so then all of a sudden now you have host sites where folks can come and bring their compost to you and it's not gonna cost you anything. In fact, they're gonna pay you and provide you the resources to actually um, come and collect and put the stuff on their site. And so with the development of those partnerships through just different activism and engagement that I've had over the years, it was an easy lift. Um, there are things that have to be paid for out of pocket, like everyone needs a bin and other people like will need flyers and there's the investment of like time and um, trying to get connected. But once those strings and those levers start to get moved, all of a sudden people wanna buy in, people are really interested. Um, and the ultimate goal is that this is a resource that just gets passed forward. Anything we generate and create we pass forward any money we make is then used to employ other people um, and to ensure the business keeps going. And so we get into this idea of community and compost because community is, for me, right, a lot of the community that I've grown up in, um, just even here in Columbus, at, Every black family I know has cookouts. Every black family, every black church I know, right? There's always food involved and there's always leftovers and people are always trying to figure out what to do with it. And the reality is that it just all gets thrown away. Um, this is the youngest office manager, this is Jasper. Um, and as it gets thrown away, it just adds to the food waste stream, which already has billions of pounds of food going in there. And there could be so much more being done with those those scraps. There's so much more that we could be doing to enrich the environment around us. And so when you think about composting and the whole food life cycle, if the same people who are having the cookouts and are buying these vegetables in large quantities for the folks that they're working with, then have a place to put the scraps and they're interested in gardening, then all of a sudden they have a full food system approach in which they can scrap their own food, receive their own compost, and then grow their own food in the next growing season. So then you, be, you begin to create this small, sir, sir, um, the smaller microeconomy of a food system. And so then with that comes education. There are a lot of folks who are really interested in education, but what does that mean? Does it mean worksheets? Does it mean flyers? Does it mean, um, you know, going to churches or going to people's homes? And the answer is all of that. There are a lot of folks who wanna make a difference in the communities that I'm working in. In Columbus, they're called opportunity zones. Those are places like 05, 06, 07, 04, um, 19, 11, and, and other places. And the reality is that the folks there want to do something different. Folks wanna make an impact, but how they can do this, where they can do this, and when they can do it is pretty limited. Um, when we're thinking even about, like we said, access to food, if your store is save a lot and the hours are, you know, maybe nine to five and you work, you know, double shifts and you can't get in there, well, what are you supposed to do? And so that's why the, the notion of being able to actually grow someone's own food through a compost um, creation is super important because everyone finds ways thank you, finds ways to benefit. And uh, sorry, my three-year-old is now mopping um, and my one-year-old is chasing him. So that's, if I ever look away, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, and so really together we compost is trying to come along and say, there are so many folks trying to do this work. How do we create this connection 
And then also, this is a form of reparations, right? Because right now, the folks who have the closest access to composting are white. And they're the ones who are going to want to pay for it and going to be super excited. So then if we're able to say, hey, you're investing this money in this Black-owned company, this is what it's going to do with the connection to the community. All of a sudden, it's a full circle, right? The folks who have the most access then become you know, providers to a different kind of access, to a different form of engagement without even necessarily realizing it. Um, and so then we become full circle because it becomes such a community investment. Um, and so how we've really gotten started and have really found our way is through our church connections, is being able to say, hey, you have a little bit of land. Hey, you have these members. Will you all be interested in participating? And I see that you have food pantries. So not only are they getting members signed up no 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 find somewhere else to do that getting their members signed up they're also the church themselves and their food pantries are getting signed up which is why we're able to create so much compostable material because we're not only pulling from these pantries we're also pulling from the members in the church and then we have folks who are just signing up in general um and then one of the other really cool ways that we're partnering with other small businesses is that lawn care services or home repair services um, who are chopping down trees or collecting leaves, they are then bringing their leftover mulch and other materials to us because you need the carbon to build the actual compost to make it healthy. And so now we've got this whole network of people who are involved that aren't, it's really not costing anyone anything to do this work. All of the materials are free. Um, everyone is interconnected and you're actually helping your neighbor without even realizing you're helping your neighbor. Everyone's getting some sort of benefit and feeling like they're winning. Excuse me, sir, that is clean laundry. There's now yogurt on everything. Um, welcome to my life. Um, you know, that, and that's our network and that's our style and that's how we're able to thrive. I think the biggest cost that we have is the fact that I have to pay for gas in my truck, but I already have a truck. So again, you know, there are these, what are your resources, who are you connected to, and how do you get going? One of the really cool features of what we're doing is that because the community is so heavily invested, because folks want to know so much, um, and every conversation leads to somebody knowing someone or having other resources, we're now trying to expand operations through contracts with places like OSU and we have some partners on the south side of Columbus who are like, well, I've got this land and I've got enough materials to build compost and resources. Can you just bring your stuff to us? So now the amount of effort and work that we have to do on the side of our team is being alleviated because people are going in who are already existing in these communities and have these relationships are just basically saying, bring it to us, let us do the work um, and you just provide the resources. And so, we get to this kind of finalized ideal ideation of like community and compost because what we're looking at is a network of everybody putting in a little bit in order to gain something bigger. Um, and the hopeful result in the end of this is that composting becomes a regular municipal um, access and utility for anyone who wants it at a low cost, um, you know, maybe even cheaper than uh, trash and recycling picked up frequently and done through an eco fleet because Columbus wants to be green by 2050 and together we compost is like, we can make you green by 2022. Like let's do this uh, together and really save and invest in ourselves. Um, so that's who we are. That's how we're working right now. The model doesn't change necessarily change right now, but we are adaptable and we're offering consulting services and certification programs to businesses um, as much education, outreach, and connection as we can. And we will go and pick up from anyone, anywhere, on campus, off campus. Um, and that's pretty much who we are and what we're doing. So I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Great. Um, thank you so much. Um, that's really important work that you're doing, um, especially, I'm sorry, 
connecting people um, where there's a need and trying to, like you said, everyone wants to contribute in their own way to the environment and you're providing people with an opportunity to do that. So that's really awesome. Um, I had a question about how you're reaching out to people um, because you said you're working with local churches and people who kind of visit them or work at those food pantries. Do you have like a centralized system where people can sign up or do you approach the churches and then they will provide you with like resources? Yeah. So great question. Um, it's a lot of our connections so far have been word of mouth. Um, we say something to someone and they know somebody else. Our connections to the city, to Swaco, um, to even these other churches or environmental groups in other counties have been, oh, I know so-and-so and they're interested in this. Um, and so the word just goes out. And then I started having initial conversations with folks, follow up, um, and then we kind of build our relationship and support from there. Um, so the centralizing factor is um, word of mouth because people trust and believe in what we're doing enough to share with their communities. Um, our other centralized space is just our website. Um, and so I'll share that online or I'll share that with folks I know, um, and then they'll share it with other people. Um, and so, you know, we've even had folks in Minneapolis or yeah, Minneapolis, Minnesota be like, well, you can't pick up at my house, but, um, you know, I'll buy a bin. And I'm like, I mean, you can buy a bin. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but you can definitely have it. Um, so, you, you know, doing kind of those, those sorts of projects. Um, so that's our approach. The centralization is more about, it's a community organizing model. Like everyone knows somebody. And so we're all connected by seven people. So hopefully we connect to everyone enough to build this out. That's great. Um, I think the community aspect of it, especially kind of builds trust within people. Um, because once you have like a business that's cut off from the people, they have a hard time trusting you are taking the compost where it's supposed to go. So that's really great that you um, have those connections. Um, another thing I was wondering about is Swaco's involvement in Together We Compost. Um, so I was wondering how they have been helping you or you have been collaborating with them on certain projects maybe? Yeah, so I got through Swaco through two connections um, and pretty much the conversation with them is really more about what is it that Together We Compost is doing and where can we fit into the Swaco universe? Um, so that's a building an ongoing conversation. In terms of the two relationships removed, one is with the city um, in a different capacity and then um, with the uh, Columbus Public Land Council. And so what's interesting is that composting in Columbus is technically not a zoning possibility. Um, so what we have to do is actually move our compost either into unincorporated spots of Columbus or into um, farms that exist inside the city or even that's a little iffy, um, but really move our products to the places like Delaware where we have two other farming connections um, because there was an issue with another compost company a few years back where they had composter left and they had too much stuff coming in and there was already a rat problem in the city and it didn't help. So now everybody points to compost as being the main issue. And it's like, no, this was dirty before. Uh, don't blame us. But now it makes it really hard for other people like Together We Compost to actually do that community work. So then part of what we're doing is working with folks like the council and our own community members and saying, what are we going to do to show that this is a viable option? Because even if they shut down this particular site, you say, okay, you're shutting it down because it works or you're shutting it down because you're thinking it might not work. So part of what we have to do is also take a stand and show that it's possible. So we have to be successful um, and also kind of like snake around certain things. Sure. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think all the compost that OSU collects at this point is being shipped off outside of Columbus to be processed um, by Go Zero, And I don't think any of that is being composted within Columbus. Um, and we recently are, have started partnering with OSU Zero Waste team and started our own compost collection for students um, on campus. And they are able to drop it off at an on-campus on location, which makes it really accessible for anyone who's working at OSU. And it's really cheap because um, OSU is not charging any processing fee from students. Um, but yeah, none of that waste is being actually composted um, on campus or even within Columbus. It's being shipped off somewhere else. Yeah, and I mean, and that makes sense because if they want to create sellable compost, it has to be done at places like a class two facility. And the amount of money you need to create a class two facility inside of the city um, for a community based organization is not realistic in the first 30 days unless someone actually already has that capital because you're looking at mechanizing your process getting at least five acres having to have a sloped space so the water drains out and the runoff not not letting it really um you're then scoot over scoot over um not you know, there's so many other barriers. So that in itself is a million dollar project just to actually open your doors. Um, you know, if I'm gonna open something for a million dollars, it might as well be a Chick-fil-A. So um, if we're gonna be completely honest about it. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, and I was wondering, so with you receiving this much volume, you said 2000 pounds of waste, you, um, how is that like more distributed throughout Columbus and is that why you're able to process it as opposed to shipping it outside of Columbus? So let me, I've received 2000 pounds total in the last few weeks of collection. It's like two or three weeks of collection. So you're looking at like five to 700 pounds a week um, just off of just general collection. Um, and what we're doing is yes, we have multiple sites so it makes it it makes it easier and um there are also specific rules like you can't have more than 500 square feet in use for composting at any one time it has to be 500 feet away from a building um so fortunate that our partnerships are able to accommodate that um and to kind of work around that but it is tricky um i have to call different people different days and say hey how much room do you have at your at your spot right now or like, are you even home? Because this was gonna all go downhill very quickly if I don't get it to either your house or to your business or wherever it is. Um, so it's it's logistically pretty tricky, but it works out because if nothing else, then we just go out to some of the places that Go Zero will do, which is at like um, Price Farms, um, a little further out, and and we can go to them or to an, or to a few other farms and just say hey, here's some stuff. And you know they'll take care of it for us um, because they don't necessarily have the same zoning regulations. Because the last thing I want to do is start a project and then have people complain, whether it's other businesses or neighbors, and then it gets shut down. So that's where we're at with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop asking questions for a bit because I have a few more. Um, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or put them in the chat. Yeah, I have another question. Um, so how many people do you think right now you're picking up from? And are those like more concentrated in certain neighborhoods or is it kind of spread out? Or where is that kind of at? Yeah, so I've got about um continuous pickups i've got about 12 right then we've got the folks who are just kind of like ah i'll call you when it's full and it's like okay ah! all right yes i know you do help me pick up thank you uh, ah! no not today um ah! excuse me sir so um and then in terms of like the actual pantries 
One of those is once a week and the other one of those is daily. Um, so the volume really just depends on what people have available. Um, and then we have, I'd say another 20 to 30 who just press the wrong button on the form. And it's like one of those things, oh yeah, I'm gonna sign up for that thing. Um, so we've got a wait list of me waiting for them to sign up. Um, and then we have one church partnership that's dedicated to like another 50 people um, signing up and then another. So the volume is, is growing and is the commitments are pretty high pretty early on. Um, but for me having a nice slower ease into it makes it logistically easier um, in terms of like trying to bounce stuff out and, and build a team and, and that kind of stuff. So I hope that answers your question. It does, it does. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, if not, I, I have one. So um, your main, one of your main goals was increasing accessibility and bringing people into this conversation who were overlooked. Um, have you received any positive feedback? What kind of, how, how are people reacting to this effort? Yeah, so to that community model, right? A lot of, sorry, there is a bucket being shaken, shook behind me. I don't, it doesn't matter what the word is. Um, bro, okay, all right, here, have this one. Um, so a lot of that, a lot of that conversation has been, oh, I'm very interested. This is a great idea. Tell me more. So the response is very good and it's very high. And that's where we're getting into the education component. And that leads us again to the community being like, oh, I know these two college students who are actually, um, you know, environmental and agriculture majors at this historically black college and university here in Ohio. Let me connect them to you. Um, and so we're actually building those toolkits. And because of my na inter national and international connections, we're building out other education and resource models that we can offer to people for free or to businesses that want to partner and say, we'll sponsor X number of bins for folks. Then we also will provide the presentations to go along with them. Um, and so it's, again, really excited. And folks just um, love the dog or cat, whatever it is. Um, folks are really excited, but they just want to know more. And so the education and outreach has started off as like conversations um, and it's turning into opportunities for presentation. Thank you. Um, I have another question. So did you ever face problems because people are not putting the right things in the compost bin? Great question. I have been super concerned about that but it's been great so far. Do not eat that. Do not eat that. Um, and the reason with folks aren't having issues is because I just made a do and don't list. And so everyone gets a do and a don't list that they get in their email and that they can just like hang up in their fridge and they have my cell phone number. So a lot of times when people are about to compost, they're like, hey, Alex, does this go in there? And I'll be like, please don't put your pork in there. Like that will ruin this for everybody. Or I'll be like, yes, eggshells, but wash them out. Um, so no issues yet. So I'm gonna knock on some wood and hope that that, that stays the case. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thanks. That's great. Cause I know like with our compost, at least during the pilot one, some of the feedback that we got back was that people wanted more um, guidance. So I guess we were kind of trying to figure out what the best way to do that would be so maybe we should i don't know if we already give out a, a list like that but if not we probably should yeah and if you want to borrow mine i can just forward it to you i mean it's it's pretty pretty easy and y'all are students don't want you to have to like work any harder or like pay someone else to do it i've already paid someone to do it so why don't you just have it so just let me know if you want it Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have like one list, which is pretty general, like grains go in the compost, any food scraps can go in there. Don't put oil, don't put aluminum or batteries, <laughs> um, all of that stuff. Um, 
but I did have one question about your price of composting, because um, that's one of the major hurdles to for people not composting, right? So one of the things we have been doing is trying to decrease that cost for students, um, because a lot of, when we did a survey, accessibility and cost were the main hurdles. So I, I was wondering how you are trying to bring that cost of composting down? Yeah, so we're at about $13 a month. Um, 13 is kind of the initial, and then it will drop down to 10 once the, once the actual system kicks in and realizes, oh, you've already received your bin, the initial delivery. Um, so it's between 10 and $13, depending on when you sign up. And that price will go up um, probably to $20. And that's just because the folks who are actually signing up to compost have the means, but we do have a sliding scale. So that's, the, that's something that's really important to me. Uh, when folks sign up, they may pay the initial price. And then in my follow-up, I reach out to them and say, hey, what, what can you afford? You know, what makes sense for you? Um, and we're developing a model in which we can give people different discount codes so they can actually put that code in before they sign up. Um, but also what we're doing is as we partner with different businesses, churches, and organizations, it's, hey, you're going to be okay. I know. Um, we're asking them to do the sponsor. We're asking them to sponsor different bins um, and for them to front the cost so folks can still sign up and people don't miss out. But then also we don't lose the uh, economic benefit of having members. Thank you. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, are there any more questions? I don't want to keep you longer than uh, too long. Oh, Jasper okay. seems like he definitely wants to be part of the conversation. He wants to be in. He really wants his bucket back. <laughs> so that's that's where we are. Um, are there any other questions? I guess the only other I the only other question I had was are there ways for people to get involved or volunteer in any way? Great question. Sorry, give me one. Sorry, potty emergency. Um, yeah, so one of the best ways to get involved, I'm gonna drop my information in the chat, reach out to me um, and we can figure out how to get you connected because some of the things we can do is be like, hey, do you wanna come help build a compost bin at this point? Or do you feel like being a volunteer compost pickup person? Like these are the dates, these are the times. Do you feel like you can pick this stuff up and bring it to X site? Um, and then once we continue to get our, our bins and our other things set up, you know, then we're going to need people to, to turn um, and we'll be doing different presentations and different forms of outreach and we'll have um, booths at farmers markets and stuff in the summer. So coming up, there's going to be a lot of ways to get plugged in to a variety of, of, of areas. Sorry, one more second. Hand washing is key. Never forget. It's a pandemic outside. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the ways to get involved. Just reach out and let's get connected and we can try and get you plugged in um, where we have the most need at the different times. Awesome. Um, we do have a lot of students who are interested in composting in our club. Um, is it okay if we share your contact information with them so they can reach out to you directly? Yeah, definitely share. Um, and I know you all have your system on campus. If folks feel like they want to venture out and try together, we compost. I'm not going to refuse them. Uh, yeah. I will come to campus. Uh, my wife used to be an associate professor um, and work in the union. So I'm very familiar with campus and students who don't look both ways when they cross the street. So um, we can make it happen. Awesome. Um, once I think more of our student members are vaccinated, we can probably come and take a look at the work you're doing and organize the field trip, if that's okay. 
That would be great. Awesome. Are there any other questions from students? If not, um, thank you so much, Alex. This was really interesting to listen to what all the work you have been doing. Um, we will post this talk on our YouTube channel um, and send that link to you if you wanted to share with anyone. Yes, um, yes please do. I would love to be YouTube famous one day. So <laughs> take a start here. Awesome. Thank you so much. And bye, Jasper. <laughs> Thank you, Jasper, say bye, Sage, say bye. Thank you all for having us. Yeah. Nice to see and meet you all. Nice to meet you. Yes, you are. Bye. Thank you.